A common question I get asked is, Michael, how do you make videos so fast? And while there's a lot of factors to this, one of the pieces that I'm actually so proud of is my desk setup. A little over a month ago, Logitech asked me to come to New York because they had something up their sleeve that would help me even more with editing and productivity efficiency. So finally today, I'm super excited to share my experience with the Logitech MX Creative Console. So this kit is actually broken up into two separate products that are packaged together. You have the Creative Dial Pad and the Creative Keypad. Now, before we get into both of these and how they work, it's very important to say up front that the real purpose of this product was customizability for each independent user. There's a reason that the keypad and dial pad are not automatically combined into one physical product. So how I have my setup is definitely not how you have to do yours. So first let's talk hardware. Now both of these products are actually made from recycled plastic and the dial is actually made of a low carbon aluminum. It's extremely compact, very easy to travel around with. And while this surprised me at first, this one actually runs not on a rechargeable battery, but two AAA batteries. The reason they did this is one for environmental sake, but actually in their testing, they did of course test out an internal rechargeable battery, but found that this was actually way more power efficient, giving you up to 18 months of use before you have to swap out the batteries. In typical Logitech fashion, you can pair up to three different computers or devices. You got your on and off switch on the back. And then in terms of customizable hotkeys, we got two on the top, we got two on the bottom on either side. Of course, you have the dial pad and you have this little roller wheel up here. Now the dial pad is not pressable and there's also no hard stops to it. So it's a very smooth experience, which is great if you're adjusting brush sizes and you really want to refine uh, the tool that you specifically have set up for the dial. Now let's talk about the keypad. We have nine light up keys, which are fully illuminated color. You can adjust the icon. We're gonna get into them. Super excited for it. Although you have nine physical keys right here, you can actually store up to 15 pages of shortcuts and icons and everything per application. Now, because this has nine light up full color little displays in there, this one doesn't run on battery because you'd be recharging it all the time. Uh, so this one just plugs in via USB type C. And the thing that I like about this is you can use it completely flat on the table if that's, you know, works best for you. But it does come with this slightly weighted little anchor that you can just kind of drop this on and have it kind of set up at an angle there. Again, it's completely your preference. So if you're not a super fan of customizing every little thing and you want something that you can just buy, take out of the box, plug in and pretty much be good to go. Well, what Logitech has done is created a whole new marketplace where them, companies, and in the future, even us as creators or just owners of the devices can create our own custom presets that we can put up for other people to download. Download. Now, right off the bat, they've partnered with Adobe to go with six of their applications to have deep integrations, bringing you the most commonly used and best tools right up in the forefront of the keypad when you first launch those programs. So if you're a fan of Lightroom Classic, Photoshop, After Effects, and more, this is something that you'll be very fast to set up and get going with. And again, as someone who, for example, uses Photoshop nearly every day to make thumbnails for my photography work, I love control interfaces because trust me, if you've never used one, being able to just focus on your screen more and just have your muscle memory kind of take over and being able to quickly adjust certain parameters or settings while never having to take your eyes off the screen to look at some complicated keyboard shortcut or go through all the different menus. It's a huge game changer for productivity. And this is before we really get into customizing anything. I've actually always loved Logitech's software when it comes to customizing their different accessories. I just think it's a clean piece of software. And as you can see, I've been in love with my MX Mechanical Logitech keyboard. And I mean, who doesn't love the MX Master 3S? But of course, here we can see our two new devices here. So we have the keypad as well as the dial pad. Now, because this is battery, it does go to sleep after a certain amount of time. So that's why it says inactive right here. All you gotta do is push one of the buttons, you'll see the green light pop up. And then in just a moment, we'll see this change to the 100%. At the top, we're going to see all of our different presets applications. And by default, you will be able to use these devices for just general computer things. 
So for example, as a general default rule, you have these two buttons at the top, undo, redo, you got escape, the actions ring, which we'll talk about. And the same thing goes with the keypad here. And I actually think the default setting is kind of a underrated feature because even if you're not already in an application, you can see all the icons that I have set up here, which I just love being able to actually customize the icons. Clearly, I just use the icons of the actual applications. But if you want to like design your own, uh, then you can go in and change that. But it's nice being able to, from here, just immediately be able to launch a new Finder window. Or I'm always going to YouTube, so I can just click YouTube. It's going to immediately open up Safari, a new tab, and here's YouTube. And again, you can create multiple pages of this. So right now I just have the one page, but if I want to add a new page here, we can see everything happens in real time, which is cool. And then all you're gonna do is go over here to your system actions. You have so many different options of what you can open in terms of like specific files, applications, web pages. Uh, you can go under advanced and do some multi-action macros. We could spend all day talking about the different actions in here, but for now, I'm just going to go into open an application. So then I can just drag it to whichever one I want. Maybe I want to put it in the middle. So I don't think I have a quick action for Photoshop yet. So let me go down here to Photoshop. And you can see by default, it takes the icon from the application and puts it there. So now we can see Photoshop's right in the middle there. And of course, if I push it, it's going to immediately open up Photoshop for me. Now this is a good segue into what these actually do with the deep integrations, especially with Adobe products like Photoshop here. So when I first opened Photoshop, we can see a lot of our basic tools and everything has nice, easy to glance at icons. Of course, you have the text below that. So the most important thing to know here is that everything is contextual for what these tools do. So when you're inside an application, it's not like this dial does one thing for one tool that you assign it to. So for example, if I do fit to screen here, and then I wanna use the spot healing brush tool because I maybe see a blemish on the phone here, I can just push that. Now if I use the dial, it's going to adjust the size of my spot healing brush tool. So now I can go in and let's say I don't wanna see that, then I can take that off. Again, I have my undo and redo button right here if I accidentally do something wrong. But then if I go to another kind of brush, you can see uh, it goes back to my default size and I can now paint something on if I wanted to. This is also where I want to talk about the action ring. So I really recommend keeping one of the buttons available for the action ring. And by default, it's this bottom right one here. And if I press and hold it, then around your mouse, you will see these different options pop up. And again, it's contextual. It's based on what application you are in. Go back here, I'm in my default setting. You can see if I press and hold here, we have different options like play pause, next track, uh, system volume, even chat GPT, open up Google real quick. And by using your mouse, you can then uh, go in and adjust these things but you can also use the dial as a contextual tool within these as well. So because this is a uh, you know monitor, it won't adjust screen brightness, but if this was my laptop screen open up, if I put my mouse over this, I don't click on anything, but then I adjust the wheel, you can see the little animation. This would be dimming and brightening my uh, computer. Same thing with system volume here. I have speakers hooked up so it doesn't adjust it, but you can see the icon down here at the bottom. But then if I jump back into Photoshop and I hold the actions ring as well, we have a whole different set of tools that are specific for Photoshop. So now I can go in and here's my exposure and you can see it's adjusting the exposure of the image. Maybe I wanna use my action ring over here so I can see what I'm doing. I can hover over contrast. So much faster than having to go through your different menus and a lot of times even faster than using keyboard shortcuts because I have access to all these tools by just pressing and holding one button and adjusting a dial. Now of course you can go in and adjust these action rings, right? Just like everything else, you can set what tools you use um, 
in each specific program. And finally, keeping with the whole vibe of customizability is if you're not a huge Adobe person, like everyone knows, I edit my videos in DaVinci Resolve. And so yes, of course, you can go in and create your own custom profiles for any program you want. Now it may not have as deep of integration and access to really specific tools that don't even exist with keyboard shortcuts in something like Photoshop, After Effects, Premiere, that's why when we go into something like the Lightroom Classic, you can see on the right hand side that they have very specific modes. Whereas if we go into my built out DaVinci Resolve profile, we are just going to get the system actions that we can kind of create from scratch. Now, since most of what I use is keyboard shortcuts, this is very easy because I can just go into here and say, and go to keyboard, keyboard shortcut, maybe I want to put one right here. Maybe I want to change playback to 2X or something. Then I'll just hit L right there, but there it is. And so you can absolutely add all of your different uh, keyboard shortcuts. But we've seen different uh, keyboard interfaces do stuff like that. What I really like is being able to mix in keyboard shortcuts with also the ability to open other programs. Because a lot of times when I am editing, the reason that I have on my first page here, um, Finder and YouTube and Soundly is because I use those things all the time. I'll be editing and I'll be like, oh, I need to open this file. And so I'll hit my Finder key and open that up. But also I'll be like, ooh, there's this YouTube video that I wanna download and reference. And so again, hitting my YouTube button to open a new YouTube page. Now, the other cool thing is you can actually import and export uh, these different profiles. So for example, let's say you really liked my different profile that I had here because uh, this isn't one of the out of the box uh, Logitech presets. I can actually go right here to my profile. I can hit export and it's going to create this LP5 file that you could then go and download. Let me know in the comments below if you want me to put it somewhere in the description. And then all you would have to do is hit add profile. You can go to import file. You'd import that LP5 file and then you'd immediately see that profile pop up here. As a micro little tutorial, just keep in mind that if I export this and import, it's the keypad. I'd have to do a separate one for the dial pad. So me and Kofi actually tested this feature out and I sent him the keypad one. He was trying to import the profile to his dial pad and it wasn't working. So make sure you're importing and exporting the proper different device. But once we got that figured out, it was super fast and he was able to get a basic DaVinci Resolve profile and then he can further customize it to his own liking after that. And I know I said it before, but talking about the ease of travel with it. It's not often that I, you know, I don't travel with a lot of my full interfaces that I'm usually working with, but being able to just take these little pucks off, throw them into a backpack, they're incredibly light, they're very small, which means that you can keep editing faster on the go. There's been countless times where I'm, you know, at home with old interfaces and I'm super fast, but then I go to travel, I'm in a hotel room and I'm like trying to use my keyboard shortcuts uh, and I'm way, way slower. And so now I can take this on the go and be just as fast anywhere I go. If you want to learn more about this, learn about the different features and everything coming with the MX Creative Console, definitely check out their link in the description below. Huge shout out to Logitech for sponsoring this video. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next video.